Are you feeling a bit panicked because the sales for one or more of your products have stopped? Maybe your bestseller isn't selling anymore or you're noticing that some of your products that used to have consistent sales have slowed down significantly. And the million dollar question in your mind is, what do I do about it? That's exactly what we're covering today. Ready? Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tiziko, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community Tizit HQ via the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation what to do when sales have stopped for your Etsy listing. If you have some listings that used to do great sales-wise but are not selling anymore, it's a very unsettling feeling, that dreadful pit in your stomach feeling and you want to fix it like yesterday, right? And most makers in your position come to me with a version of this question. I need to work on this listing, but should I just make changes to my current listing and keep the listings history? Or should I release this item in a new listing to essentially start fresh in the eye of the algorithm? Now, in today's scenario, your listing has a positive history with Etsy because it has sales. It probably has reviews, hopefully good ones, and it probably has some favorites as well. And so essentially there is beneficial positive data that's attached to this listing ID with Etsy. So for this specific situation, I would advise not to delete and release and instead tweak so that you can keep that positive data attached to the listing. The next question then becomes what changes should I make? Like, you know, where do I start? And to decide what to tweak and change, we need to figure out why it stopped selling. But first, before we dive into changing your listing, there's two things you need to check. One, is it a seasonal product? You want to make sure that the decline in sales isn't simply a case of seasonal sales changes. Is this a product, for example, that sells more in the summer and sales have dropped in the fall? Take a look at the sales history for that listing and the trends over the years. If you see signs that this is a seasonal product, then leave that listing alone. It will likely come and pick back up when that season comes again. You can also look at the keyword data on E-Rank, for example, for the keyword that you use on that listing and see if there are mostly seasonal keywords that are bringing traffic to your listing. I know it might sound obvious to some of you, but some of you also may not have thought about that. So I want to mention it to be sure that you don't go to a lot of work changing a listing that doesn't really need to be changed if it's just a case of seasonal demand. Now, is this a trend or just normal fluctuation? That's the second thing you want to do is make sure that you're seeing a real trend. When you look at your product sales, you don't want to panic about, you know, changes over the last two weeks or over the last month or even the last couple of months, right? You want to make sure that this is a real trend and not just a normal fluctuation of your sales with that listing, because sometimes we can act a little too quickly and I see so many posts on you know facebook groups for example that sound like my listing used to sell really well until last last tuesday and then it kind of stopped what should i do and the answer here would be nothing two weeks is not enough time so you do nothing right now i'm using two weeks as an example but my point is that you want to give it a little bit more time sure you can and you should definitely keep an eye on it but there's no need to take action quite yet so in short, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. We don't want to break things by making changes to a listing that's actually still selling or going through normal fluctuations. So if you've determined that it's not just a normal fluctuation and it's not seasonal and it's really not working anymore, then you are ready to decide what changes you want to make to your listing. Now, the changes you make will depend on what your specific scenario is. And by that, I mean what symptom are coming with that drop in sales. So typically when sales drop, either your product conversion rate has dropped or the product views have dropped but your conversion rate has actually stayed the same. If I was troubleshooting with you, the first question I would then ask is as your conversion rate dropped on the specific listing and by that I mean as your conversion rate dropped while other competing listings on the platform had their conversion rate go up. Because when this happens, Etsy will keep sending views to your listing for a little while, but if it's starting to make less sales than other competing listings, then Etsy is going to start sending searches to the other listings instead, which means that you will then start to get less views. So if your answer is yes, my conversion rate has dropped, then here are the things that you will want to look at. You want to look at your competition and at individual competitors listings and ask yourself these questions. 
are there more competitors selling the same type of product now versus when you first launched that listing? Do those competitors have a lower price? Do they ship their products faster or offer cheaper shipping? Also look at your competitors' photos within the product listing because these are the ones that affect the conversion rate the most. We will be talking about thumbnails a little later in this video. For here, you really want to focus on photos inside the listing because those are the ones that affect your conversion rate the most, right? So if your competitors have higher quality photos, photos that say answer questions potential shoppers might have that your photos fail to communicate. Maybe they have better props or backdrops, anything like that, which might make the conversion rate higher than yours. Of course, you'll also want to look at product descriptions, product titles, and all of that. Anything essentially that might comparatively make your product seem less appealing than the competitor's product. Essentially, what you want to ask yourself is as your market, and when I say market, I don't mean Etsy or even your niche on Etsy, but at an even more zoomed in level within your niche, looking at the competitors for that specific listing and product as they've evolved and changed. And more importantly, are you changing with it? And if you aren't, I know it's a bit of a hard truth to hear, but the reality is that you've got to keep up or you're going to get, to get left behind, right? A listing that might have been great two years ago might now not look very competitive compared to other listings that are currently on Etsy. And as soon as you lose the conversion rate on your listing, those views are going to drop. And from that point on, it becomes a vicious cycle of fewer conversion, fewer views, and repeat. So I would work on each of the things I just mentioned first to see if you can create an uptick in your conversion by improving the quality of the listing. Now, if your conversion rate hasn't dropped, then the next question I would ask you is, have you had a sudden drop in views? If your conversion rate hasn't been affected, but you are experiencing a sudden drop in views, then I will look at these other factors. The first thing I would do is do some keyword research, looking at the keyword search volume and the volume of competition for your keywords. What you're trying to determine here is, are the keywords that you're using actually still being searched? And also as the volume of competition on those keywords change. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying about trends and competitors. If something is not trending anymore, then that keyword in the search data, so for example, in E-Rank, is going to show very low search volume or at least lower search volume than it showed maybe the first time you did the SEO for that listing. If it's still trending, the E-Rank data will show that the keywords are still popular, but you may see that there is a lot more competition for that keyword now versus when you first listed your product. So here you're looking at the data from a purely keyword competition aspect to see if you discover a possible reason for your decrease in product views. You also want to look at the thumbnail photos of competing listings because the thumbnail is what gets the clicks and the views. If your views have dropped, is your thumbnail not so appealing anymore so that when it does show in search results, people aren't actually clicking on it? Do their products pop more than yours? Are the props or backdrops better? Ask yourself why those thumbnails are getting more clicks than yours and use that information to create better thumbnails photos for your products. Now, I know we talked about pricing in the conversion rate discussion, but I want to mention it here again when we're talking about a drop in views because customers will compare your price with those of competing listings when they are looking at search results and deciding which listings to click on initially. Now, once again, I want to say that you do not want to get into a pricing competition because that is just a race to the bottom, but you do want to take a look at your price and compare it to the products showing in the search results. If your pricing is totally out of line with theirs and you're thinking, dang, my prices are way too high, don't worry. I have a video all about what to do when your handmade prices are too high that I will leave the link uh, for down below so that you can dive into that if you think that's a problem that you're having. The next thing to check is if there is something about your product that's not so trendy anymore. For example, let's say you sell t-shirts that have quotes on them. Is it a quote that was very popular for a while but not so much lately? Or is the color or the pattern you use not so trendy as it used to be? Trends can be words, colors, styles, so many things. So you want to look at each detail of your product and consider whether or not the demand for it might simply have dropped. And finally, the last thing I want to talk to you about is is a very important detail and that is to be sure you aren't putting all your eggs in the one basket as in the one product as hard as it may be to hear but I need to say it the reality is that sometimes your bestseller just stops being a bestseller and while you want to have bestsellers and maximize sales on those bestsellers at the same time you don't want to be relying solely on them for sales you want to keep adding new collections 
new products so that essentially you keep challenging in a way your bestseller and trying to find something that's going to sell as well or even better. Here's a perfect example. You all have a favorite clothing boutique, right? Online or retail storefront that say carries the style of clothing that you like and that you love to wear. Now imagine if every time you went to that boutique, they had the same clothes in the same colors, time after time after time. After a while, you wouldn't be as interested in going to that shop, right? You just wouldn't go anymore. But if it's your favorite boutique, I'm betting that each time you visit it, you find new items that have been added or perhaps your favorite item is now available in a whole set of different, you know, colors. So you become excited to keep going back to that store, to that boutique, because there may be something new that you want to buy. The same goes for your handmade shop, right? You want to keep your customers excited to visit your shop and see what new exciting products or product varieties you're offering. And that's for people who are already customers, but even for people who have never shopped from you before, if your window displays something that was on trend two years ago, are they really going to come in inside your store and buy? Probably not. So it's important to remember that bestsellers aren't bestsellers forever. It can happen, obviously, and you want to try and get sales back up for those listings that used to sell and don't anymore. But you also don't want to forget to create new listings as well, listings that could become your next bestseller. As you incorporate these tips into your current listing, I think for most of you, the part where you're going to find the most frustration is Etsy SEO. But never fear, <laughs> I have a video for that too. Just watch the video that's showing on your screen right now somewhere on my face and start getting better results with your SEO. Thanks for watching and until next time, au revoir.